Can a 10-year-old camera still really be good enough in 2024? Yes, you heard me right. The trusty Sony A5100, the first camera I ever reviewed on this channel, is now 10 years old. But is it still usable all these years later? Well, if you've been to this channel before, you'll know that I revisit this camera every year. And every year I expect to say to you, no, it's not good enough anymore. So is this year any different? Let's find out. So let's go over some of the specs for the A5100 quickly. The sensor on this camera is a 24.3 megapixel CMOS sensor. And amazingly, Sony was still using this sensor on new cameras until just last year, up until the Sony A6700, which was released finally with a new 26 megapixel CMOS Exmor R sensor. So in that regard, it really isn't that out of date despite being 10 years old. But there are some things that are out of date, and this camera is missing a lot of modern features you would preferably want. So let's get those out of the way first. The A5100 doesn't have in-body stabilization, which is a premium feature even for newer cameras, but not having it can make it difficult to shoot steady footage, especially video. Now, of course, there are plenty of lenses with stabilization built in, such as the trusty 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens, which comes with this camera. So if you are focusing on video, of course, there are ways around this stabilization, but it is worth noting that it doesn't have it built in to the camera body. Now, additionally, the camera's battery life is average at best. So it's important to carry extra batteries with you if you're planning on a long day shooting. And of course, as this camera is not really available new anymore, or there's not many new ones left on the market. If you're buying secondhand, you've got to look out for battery degradation, it means that this short battery life is getting shorter all the time. Now, of course, there is also no EVF, which is an electronic viewfinder on this camera, which is definitely a drawback, especially for photography. You always have to line up your shots just using the screen. But on the other hand, this is a huge space saver and helps keeps this camera very small. So it can be seen as a positive depending on what you are after from a camera. Also, the built-in microphone is not the best quality. I'll swap over to this now. And so this audio that you can hear now is using the built-in camera rather than my microphone that I've got here to capture the audio. So you can tell it's quite a lot of difference. Also, this camera doesn't have a mic jack built in, so any microphone that you plug in is going to be completely separate from the camera, which is a bit of a pain to set up. Okay, so they are the main downsides, but well, let's talk about picture quality. So as you'd expect from a 10-year-old camera, we're missing 4K video, with a maximum resolution of 1080p at 60 frames per second. But does that necessarily make the picture quality bad? Well, this whole video that you're watching has been recorded using the A5100. So you can assess for yourself if it's up to scratch for your needs. And just to note, I am recording at 1080p, but I'm not using the kit lens. The lens I'm using is the Viltrox 23mm f1.4 lens. If you're interested in learning more about that, I have a full review of it on my channel. As for the picture quality for photos, well, all the examples that you've already seen and will be in the rest of this video have been taken using the A5100. So you can see what the camera is capable of from a photography point of view. But overall, the picture quality is good enough for both photography and video, especially when paired with a good lens. It definitely leans more towards video, but it's still a very handy, small-sized travel camera. And on that topic of lenses, let's talk about lenses, because this is one of the biggest factors of what can make or break your shot. The Sony E-mount lens system, which this A5100 uses, has a huge range of lenses, which means you can improve your shots massively with the same old camera. From the Sigma 16mm f1.4, which is brilliant for YouTube or videos, or the Viltrox 23mm, which I'm using for this video, which I mentioned before. Prime lenses like these with a wide aperture can make for super sharp images with very little noise. Now, if you need a bit of zoom, then maybe the Sigma 18 to 50 millimeter F 2.8 is the perfect kit lens replacement. Or if you really need to zoom in, then the massive Sony 70 to 350 millimeter, 
which is a telephoto powerhouse, is great for sports and wildlife. Basically, there are tons of great lenses out there, which will improve your photography and video a lot more than buying a new camera would. And for reviews of all these lenses, please subscribe to the channel. And if you're enjoying this review, drop a like on the video, as it helps me out a lot. Okay, so when it comes to the camera's plus points, the full HD 1080p video recording quality is very good, despite the camera, of course, not having 4K. With a good lens to replace the kit lens, then your image quality for both photography and video will be of a good standard. Along with the camera's tiny size, it makes it a great option for vlogging and shooting short films. The camera also has a 180 degree tiltable touchscreen, which makes it easier to frame your shots from unique angles, and you can also use it for focusing. One of the main highlights is the video capability and live streaming of this camera. Now you do need to pair it with a capture card to be able to use it for live streaming. It doesn't have this functionality built in, but it does make it a great choice for a static streaming camera because of its compact size and sharp video quality. It makes it a much better option than a webcam for streaming or video calls without breaking the bank. So talking about not breaking the bank, what is the price? Well, as I've already mentioned, this camera isn't in production anymore, which does make finding a brand new one a little bit more difficult. And this unfortunately leads to big variations in price for picking up this camera new. Now at the time of recording, Amazon has its price at around $450, which to be honest is too much to pay for this camera, despite all the good points that I've laid out. And as I've suggested in previous years, used is the way to get this camera at a reasonable price. Right now they sell on eBay for around $290, which is an excellent price for this camera. So that leaves us with the question, should you buy this camera, the Sony A5100 in 2024? Well, the answer against all the odds is still yes. If you need an affordable first camera, which has good image quality, is compact and has a great range of lenses, then the A5100 is still a fine choice. As I mentioned, it's a great camera for live streaming and paired with a better lens, such as the Sigma 18 to 50 f 2.8, is a solid photography camera, which is also small enough to be perfect for travel. So go on then, hands up in the comments who is still using their A5100 in 2024. I'd love to know who's still using it. Now, I don't use it all the time as my main camera, but I do still use it a surprising amount seeing as how old it is. But if you're not using it anymore, what camera have you upgraded to? Let me know that as well. But as always, if you've enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to the channel and dropping a like on the video. But until next time, see ya.